So our two featured speakers for today um, to be talking about Brady Market are another advisory board member, Jesse Lyons, um, who is the farm coordinator at Brady Farm. Uh, she co-founded Syracuse Grows and has been working to support community gardens and urban ag in Syracuse since 2008. Her background is in ecology and community-based design, and she worked for Cornell Cooperative Extension in Onondaga County as their natural resource program coordinator before starting the Brady Farm in 2016. She also, as I said, serves on the SOPS advisory board. And our other speaker is Larkin Pasidlik, MS and MPH. Um, she's an experienced food systems and nonprofit leader who currently works as a consultant, providing grant writing, program development, and other food systems and public health consulting services. Larkin is currently working primarily with the Brady Market. She has a BA in anthropology from SUNY Geneseo and a master's from Tufts in agriculture, food, and the environment, and in public health. Larkin has developed and implemented community nutrition, food access, and agriculture programs in both urban and rural communities across the Northeast. She is driven by a belief that all people should have equitable access to healthy food grown sustainably. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to them to talk about the Brady Market. Thanks, Steve. I don't know if anybody likes hearing their bio read. It's always so awkward. Um, so we are going to um, talk to you today about the new Brady Market, which I'm sure some of you have heard about. Um, can you go to the next slide, Steve or Mora? Yep, thank you. So Brady Market is a new initiative under a new nonprofit of Brady Social Enterprises, which is associated with the Brady Faith Center. And I'll let Jesse talk about that a little bit further down the line. So it's a new initiative of both workforce development and food access on the near west side. Um, it's a project of the Brady Faith Center, as I already said. We're going to tell you a little bit about it. Welcome any questions either at the end or um, as we go, feel free to jump in. Um, I'm relatively new to the project and it is a relatively new project. So I'm really hopeful that any questions or comments that you all have will actually really help us get this off the ground. Next slide. So the vision for Brady Market is that it is a market for the community, operated by the community, putting revenue back into the community, and with provision of services that foster hope, health, and healing, which is really those three words are what we're calling this initiative. They're really the central tenets of the whole initiative. The market will be a grocery store, as I'll talk about momentarily, but not a full-scale shop. It's not going to be the old No James. It's going to provide food access, especially in the area of discount foods, so that we can take advantage of excess supply in the food system and use that for food access in an underserved community. But it's not going to be a full-scale 30,000-foot grocery store. Um, really what we're saying is that the product of this initiative is the people. The grocery store is kind of a means to an end. It's first and foremost going to be a workforce development initiative and a healing initiative with food and health as the result of, of those um, other components. This is really modeled after uh, the Homeboy Industries project out of LA. If you've heard of it or you can Google it, it's a gang rehab, gang rehab and re-entry project that really focuses on healing. They have bakeries and stores and all sorts of food and other related initiatives. Um, one of the reasons I think it's always important to mention of, of why I joined this project is outside of the food access opportunities, which I think are limitless, is because of Brady Faith Center's vision to walk alongside members of, com of the community and people in need. Um, in my very first meeting with Kevin Frank, the Brady Faith Center Executive Director, he said that the goal of Brady Faith Center is to uh, stand in awe of the burdens that people carry and not judge how people carry them. And that really spoke to me and I thought, oh yes, I gotta, I gotta be um, in on this. So this really is a community project that is meant to be by and for the community. Next slide. So the market is, as I said, located on the west side. It's in what used to be the old No Jame market space. It shares a building and a parking lot with the WIC offices, a pharmacy, and a primary care office. So I really think that the opportunities for collaboration are, are enormous. The store is only going to use about 8,000 square feet for grocery operations, and the rest is going to be used for other services, the training rooms, offices, um, the kitchen, that kind of thing. Next slide. 
Just in case you're a visual person the way I am, uh, it's located right there on the corner of Gifford and West Street in a really um, high need area, but also a service rich area. Rescue Mission is nearby, Huntington Family Center, St. Lucie's. There's a lot of other services around there. Next. So as I mentioned, hope, health, and healing are the central tenets of this initiative. And I'll go a little bit more in depth on each of them. But the hope is really the hope to an under-resourced community through employment and training. The health is the increased access to fresh fruit, fresh and nutritious, excuse me, fresh and nutritious foods. And the healing is the secure base of wraparound services. So if you go to the next slide, Hope is really the, the bulk of the work, um, hope and healing. It means a paying job on day one. So all of our trainees are going to go through a healing process, but then they're also gonna be going through employment and workforce development training through CNY Works for sort of the gen general um, employment training and then some really specialized grocery skills as well in butchering, food preparation, kitchen, kitchen skills. Um, so it's really on the job training and sort of an apprenticeship model. We're also going to be providing wraparound services and ultimately place those staff either in Brady long term if they want to stay at that grocery store or elsewhere so that they have opportunities in the rest of the food, food system. Next slide. Health is really the store and what we offer in terms of improving food access. The store is going to have sort of your traditional um, perimeter with produce, meat counter, prepared foods, deli, frozen foods. And then the center store is going to be a little bit different. That's going to be the discount grocery with rotating items depending on what we're able to source from the rest of the food system. We will have some staple items that our, our neighbors in the community can really count on always having, but a lot of it is going to depend on what we're able to source. We're applying for SNAP, um, but at this time we're not planning on having WIC because of the size of the store and what we're carrying. We aren't planning on carrying diapers and formula and some of the other WIC related um, items, and so we're still having conversations um, now that I'm saying that, I'm not sure that's right. Uh, <laughs> it's what we were talking about this morning. And as it came out of my mouth, I thought, I don't think that's right. So right now we are um, in the process of applying for SNAP. Um, and I'm sure that because we have the building shared with WIC, um, we'll be having those conversations moving forward. And then the rest of the space is going to be a training space with kitchen and butcher, um, bakery and classroom. Next slide is just a little bit of a mock-up. We're so deep in construction right now, the only thing that I could show you is the blue ceiling. Um, and so we'll just share with you these mock-ups. As you can see, the middle section is really not shelves, but more of a pallet approach. So it's gonna be very low profile. You'll be able to see everywhere. It's gonna feel very open. We'll have probably three cash, cash registers with point of sale systems um, and, and be able to check people out that way. And we're really going to be emphasizing the butcher and the prepared food section, especially for um, folks who might need special cuts of meat or special types of meat that, um, that they aren't able to get elsewhere. Next slide. So the healing component, it really has four components, case management, mentors, access to therapeutic services and learning circles, all of that happening under one roof so that everyone participates within a really healing community. So it's really workforce and healing together. The secure base is a regular meeting led by the participant that includes their therapist and their case manager. And we anticipate engaging the secure base when or if there are issues related to employment coming up so that it really is a back and forth and a supportive work environment, not simply a, you know, you were late three times and so we're letting you go. Really trying to understand what people are showing up to work with um, and how that, how that impacts their work life as well. Next slide. So again, just to reiterate, this is um, another part of our business plan is the, the four goals. So it's creating new jobs and providing job readiness and workforce development training, increasing access and affordability of fresh and nutritious food, providing that secure base with wraparound services for our employees and their families, 
and catalyzing reinvestment in the local community through innovative and exciting collaborations. We really see this as a way to keep money in the community in the food system, not you know, not to pick on any other stores in the area, but where your, your money might go up to a nameless corporation somewhere else. Um, this is really going to be local. Next slide. So there are many partners waiting in the wings. We've been having a lot of conversations with our, with uh, organizations that want to partner. These are really our three main ones right now. CNY Works is providing the workforce development training, as I mentioned. It's About Childhood and Family is a nonprofit that focuses on children's mental health and family mental health. They're providing the therapeutic services through a contract right now. And then, of course, Brady Farm, which is another offshoot of Brady Faith Center, is going to be providing some products for the store. Um, so I'm going to turn it now over to Jesse Lyons to share more about Brady Farm and the interconnectedness of Brady Faith, Brady Farm, and Brady Market. Since she's been around longer, she can speak to it a lot better than I can. Thanks, Larkin. You did great. Um, could you advance, Maura or Steve? Yeah, so um, the Brady Faith Center has been in the community. I think uh, this is the 75th year that the Brady Faith Center has been operating within our community. Um, it is a Catholic mission, um, and it has a very strong social justice approach. And like, you know, Larkin spoke to Kevin um, and the feeling is not about judgment, but walking alongside people um, and finding unique ways to help address the, the whole person. Um, and that's not always a religious approach. Um, so with that ethos in mind, they started the Brady Farm as a way of initially thinking that it could be job creation um, and also addressing some food access limitations. Um, but that's, our farm has now transitioned a little bit more. Yes, still um, trying to address food access, but also being a really good opportunity for education around food and nutrition um, and also community building, gardening. So we have a significant aspect, educational aspect to our farm. So we are still directly related to the Brady Faith Center. Um, so we're all nonprofit. And now the Brady Market is now a separate little branch, still affiliated with the Brady Faith Center in the farm, but really um, serving as its very own unique entity. So there's gonna be a little bit of crossover and partnership involved, but it's really gonna be standing on its own. Um, so neither the farm nor the market have a religious affiliation. Um, so yes, the, like I said, the Brady market is really about food distribution and we're using that food distribution as a vehicle for providing healing services, employment opportunities, the workforce development, and also getting to this um, big, vacuum um, of healthy food in the near west side neighborhood. Okay, so the farm is, we're pretty new. We started in 2016. Uh, we have 5.8 acres. We've probably just grown about four acres of that. Um, and we've been growing pretty rapidly starting with just under an acre the first year. And um, so our relationship with the market is um, we will be providing some of the specialty produce items. Um, and we will also be a place that the participants in that hope, health, and healing model can receive more farm-to-table type experience and training. They can learn more about food safety and, you know, things like that. Um, and also a fun aspect is things like, um, okay, well, I'm obsessed with making hot sauce, but, and then yesterday I just made like this mushroom seasoning that was really fun that I gave to customers um, because we had these excess mushrooms that got dried. Um, so we have an opportunity to expand value-added processing and using the processing of those products at the store as a way to do training, but also for the catering service. So the, the store will also have a catering program. So they'll be able to also use some of our excess and novel products within their own enterprise. So we're really looking at the market as um, different enterprises and where food is touching that, that's a place for the farm to be involved. Um, the, yes, this is going to be a discount market, but, and we are trying to serve a very high need neighborhood. We also have the opportunity to serve lots of people who are downtown. So we are not going to provide just discount produce and just, so kind of my little niche is helping to form a bridge so that we can also offer other really high quality locally grown, um, foods 
that aren't necessarily discounted. Um, so I know that I can't afford to sell everything at discount from the farm, we wouldn't be sustainable, but there's still a lot of people who are interested in what we sell um, and other farms, you know, like maybe Grindstone and Hartwood Farm too. You know, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for us to also support local agriculture and food system um, in addition to just the discount market opportunities. Uh, so we're, we haven't really defined exactly what the relationships are and how we're going to do it, but those are some of the partnerships strategically that we're trying to build with the market. And I'll jump back in to just talk briefly about future opportunities and then um, Jesse and I can answer any questions. We really see, as I think I've said a million times because I'm so excited about it, limitless opportunities to grow this initiative. There's the potential for catering, as Jesse said, and growing that for sharing cold storage with other nonprofits that need to rent space because we're smaller than No James was. We have a lot of space in the um, freezer and cooler opportunities to use the space in the other half of the store, um, opportunities to connect with future employers. And I see really a, a million opportunities for food and health initiatives, whether that's fruit and veggie prescriptions or, you know, behavioral economics and the nudges of where you put food in the store and how that gets people to choose healthier options. You know, there's a, a ton of different things that we can try. Um, we'd love to hear from all of our SOFSA partners either today um, in the form of questions and comments or shoot us emails about ideas you have or collaborations that you think would be good for this initiative. Um, we're really in the planning phases still of, of how this is going to look um, and would love anybody's input. So Steve, you can go to the last slide. Um, so for me, I'm handling any collaboration, general inquiries. Um, if you wanna see the space once it's uh, looking a little more like a space, um, I'm your person. If you want to get involved in donating or fundraising to this initiative, we are fundraising for it. And you can contact Kevin at Brady Faith for that, or of course, Jesse for anything farm related. So we'd love to, to take any questions that you guys have, if we have time. Is this like go for it, Robin? Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm on the board of uh, Partners in Learning, and we run a pre-K um, at um, Westside Learning Center. Well, we don't run it at; it's not at Westside Learning Center, but it's in our offices are there. But I know that there's also pre-Ks at the schools in that immediate area. And so, you know, um, I certainly think that there's possibilities of working with the kids. Like I know there's a, a stone farm market, a stone farm farm, the stone, you know, that's community soup. garden. Stones Thank you. Community garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but just having kids exposed to different foods, but also we are really partners um, in learning works generationally. So um, while, most people know us because of Manos. Um, we do do other programs and certainly anything that we can do that we can work together, I think would be really interesting. So Larkin, I'm gonna send your name to the executive director. Yeah. Is that okay? Please do, yep. And then maybe you guys can, can talk more. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. Especially Thanks, if you have people who speak Spanish. I mean, because most of our work is bilingual. We're um, starting to interview a potential office manager, sort of a store manager, office manager role who is, uh, we're hoping to be bilingual. Yeah. So. Um, I see that Jacob asked about what the timeline is looking like for this project. It's funny, this morning we were on the phone with somebody who's used to work for Wegmans, who's going to be involved as an advisor. And she said she's never seen a store open on time. Um, so that that felt good to have a good vote in that direction. We are going to open when we're ready, when our people are ready, when the store is ready. We probably will be finishing construction in the next six weeks or so. So we're really hoping for a spring opening. How do you guys, uh, what's your strategy for sourcing and, um, and specifically like the discounted section? Is that just going to be things will, products will move through 
the rest of the store and then to the discounted section? Or are you going to be sourcing things as discounted products? Jesse, do you want to take that? I'm new enough now that I have not gotten involved in any of the sourcing conversations yet. Yeah, so there is really a model that we're um, going to be partnering with, but basing this off called the Compassion Coalition and the Bargain Grocer in Utica. And their primary mechanism is um, accessing surplus food in the supply because a truck was late, you know, maybe it's St. Patrick's like March 18th and you have a million onions, potatoes and cabbage that now need to be sold and everybody already bought them. So um, there are regular shipments that are coming through the Syracuse and Utica area um, on trains of really trailers that are being rejected at the dock or they have excess supply and they have to offload that. So that's what we're able to tap into is this like rescue of food and excess supply within the food system and able to offer that at a discounted rate. So again, it's not going to be all local necessarily. And that's why it's every week is going to be different. You know, every three days is probably going to be different what's offered because it's really what's happening in the market. So it's really a reclamation. Is, is there any plan to do similar sort of reclamation with, with local farms, with anybody who has access? We haven't gotten there. I mean, and that's definitely a possibility. Um, like I said, my particular role is going to be continue, continuing to advocate. This is a really funny, like philosophical dance to be offering discount food while still trying to support local agriculture. <laughs> and so there's that we're, we're conscientious of that and trying to, um, you know, walk that line. Um, but yes, we would want to be able to do that. And if we have that opportunity for sure. I just, I want to jump in uh, after Nell and Steve to, to introduce myself. I know a lot of you on the call, but I'm Jesse Kearns, Program Coordinator with Syracuse University's Center for Sustainable Community Solutions. And I come to this group uh, from the wasted food prevention and reduction and rescue side of things. So I'm really interested in setting up in the Central New York area, uh, modeling after programs like Feed HV uh, in the Hudson Valley and Friendship Donation Network in Tompkins County. And I see maybe a, a potential here. I'd love to somehow set up a hub that can work with Peter and fill some of the gaps that the food bank isn't able to get at with more of the perishable produce through um, gleanings, um, maybe helping farmers tap into the farm to food pantry tax credit. And if there's opportunity, Jesse and Larkin to have um, to have the, the, the this new Brady store be maybe a hub for some of that, that would be really, really interesting because that's, that's one of the big barriers, right, is cold storage uh, for yeah. some of the more perishable food. Jesse, definitely shoot me an email because we're not only thinking about how are we sourcing things, but because we're going to have prepared foods, we know that we will have some prepared foods left over at the end of the day. And we're really thinking about what is our ethos? What are we doing with regard to that food as well to make sure that it's not going to waste? Absolutely. Yep, we'll do. Great. Yeah, and I'll throw in there also, we will, um, at the moment, we're going to have excess storage capacity, cold storage, like true excess. And um, we have, you know, from the get-go, and I don't expect the store, we have a limited square footage, so we can only store so much anyhow, um, that we will have more cold storage capacity than we can use at the grocery store. So our goal is things like when Chobani Yogurt wants to do this massive, you know, we had this glut of dairy, you know, a couple times during the pandemic and no place to store it. And like, I don't have large enough cold storage at our farm. So this would be an opportunity to use that space for other community purposes, whether it's emergency food need or, you know, community-based projects, but trying to really to keep that as a, a grassroots and community-based um, need. So that would be, you know, flux out as the need arises. And I had like a random farmer contact me needing like storage for three days for like fingerling potatoes. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm really sorry. I really want to help you, but I don't have that many that much pallet space. But this would have been one of those opportunities to support a farmer who needed a stopgap. I I like that. This is Saisha. Sorry, my camera's off. Um, I like the idea of the sharing the cold storage space. I think of when I worked on the West Side, all the nonprofits, and we would get donations of like yogurts, and we couldn't get rid of it. So the idea of even sharing with like a Huntington Family Center, the Boys and Girls Club, you have all those little La Casita, all those um, youth centers um, that sometimes need some help storing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Is there yeah, I wonder be- about like summer meals too, like um, coordination with summer meal distribution sites for kids, which I, cause I know that cold storage is also a huge issue for that with so much service provision in the neighborhood. Sorry, yeah, now go yeah. ahead. It's okay. Um, I was go- going to ask if this is going to be some, if there are going to be some opportunities for like an incubator type kitchen, like if it's going to be only kind of reserved for the people that are moving through the Brady market system, or if it's going to be, there's going to be potential for people that just need a, a kitchen that's inspected that they can make a product or some storage space that they can do this one thing that they want to sell. I think, and Jesse, feel free to jump in and maybe I have this wrong, not right now, but certainly I think the, the ideas that we have for growing this and really using the space um, and Brady market is, is the first project of this nonprofit Brady social enterprises. And we're really thinking that, um, that we could do a lot of food related things and workforce and healing related things under Brady social enterprises. So um, the market is kind of the beginning. Yeah. And I would say, I wouldn't, I don't expect that this is going to move toward business incubation, but if it was really about creating space for people to use kitchen, that is part of the goal, is that that would be a resource and and how our farm is going to be plugged in to using that as a resource. Well, thank you so much, Jesse and Larkin. Really appreciate getting to know a little bit more intimately what's happening with this project and um, very excited to support you in any way. Um, I think as as prevalence rates of COVID go down, it would be really great to organize a site visit. I'm I'm assuming rates will go down. Let's let's all be optimistic um, in this moment. Um, but as as vaccination rates go up and and prevalence rates go down, I I would certainly hope that we could arrange to have a visit um, sometime in the spring, perhaps.